Hey everybody, Jake here, and today we're going to take a look at the CRKT Pilar. It's a very interesting design, um, it's taken me a year, but I finally got around to uh, picking this up, and we're going to go ahead and get into a review of it. I'll go over what I like, what I'm neutral towards, what I dislike, um, but before all that, we'll go and do some size comparisons. Alright, first up with the size comparison is going to be the Victorinox Classic. So... These, this is a small knife, but this is a very small, uh, I guess you can kind of call it a knife. It technically has a knife blade. But you can see the size difference here is pretty drastic. Um, this one obviously weighs a lot more. It's a lot thicker, a lot larger. It's also a much better cutting tool. Something that's in a similar size range is going to be the Spyderco Dragonfly. Now these two are very close in size. Um, they differ quite a lot in weight and uh, some other things about them, but they're pretty close in size. So if you have one of these two, you can kind of see how the other stacks up. And for a bit more of a full size knife, this is a three and a half inch blade. This is a booze blade smoke. So you can see overall much, much longer. And just for fun, the PMP beast, much, much, much larger knife. Um, especially when it comes to thickness, I think you could almost slide the pilar through this, maybe. But the pilar is a relatively small knife. Um, that's not a bad thing, though. I actually really, really like the size on this. Uh, speaking of which, let's go ahead and get into what I like about it. First thing up is going to be the design. So overall, this is a very, very interesting design. Um, it's, it's just nice. It's compact. I, I really enjoy the way it fits in your hand, especially when it's open. The ergonomics are really, really good. They did a great job with that finger choil. Not that you have to use it. If you have smaller hands, you certainly don't have to, but I always use that finger choil. A little bit of ramp up here. Perfect slot for your thumb. The blade shape is really, really, really nice, and it cuts pretty well. It's a full flat grind. The blade stock's a little thick. We'll get back to that. But overall, the knife, the design, the way it feels in your hand, the way it performs, it's, you know, pretty good. The size, with it being so compact, it's very, very easy to carry. Um, it's not super, super thick. And it's, it's, a, it's a really good everyday carry kind of size. Great for EDC stuff. And the blade shape is super useful for that. Um, it doesn't have a super great puncturing tip, but you probably don't need that day to day. And I found that that's enough to get into the stuff that I do have to puncture, like uh, dog food bags, things like that. Um, generally, that's enough for me, and it cuts extremely well. The design's great. The size is really good. The blade shape is nice. I love sheep's foot blades, and the ergonomics are probably one of the best parts about this knife. On to one neutral towards. First thing up is actually going to be the price. Um... It's not terrible, but with the materials you're getting, it's not great. And the action, we'll get back to that in a minute. So, for the price, which is $20, you're getting 8 CR13 MOV steel and uh, stainless steel. I'm sorry, not stainless. A steel, um, steel show side, steel lock side, and what I believe is an aluminum backspacer, which I'm not a big fan of. Um, the knife isn't super, super gray as far as materials go, um, but the price is okay. I think it, CRKT and Kershaw, more CRKT than, than Kershaw, but, um, CRKT is getting a lot of competition now from these Chinese knives with incredible values. You can get like D2 steel for $20, $25, and I, I'm not super, I don't care a ton about steels. But when I can get D2 for the same price as 8CR 13 MOV, I'm going to go D2 every time. It's, it's just a, a better steel as far as edge retention goes. Um, they've, now, they've done this knife in a few different um, runs as well, one of which included uh, 12, uh, 12C28N steel, which is pretty good. That's what you'll find on like the um, Real Steel G5 Metamorph. And they've also done one in S35VN, which was interesting it had a, a carbon fiber show side i would be very interested in this knife if they did a higher end version um, on bearings maybe uh, 
I'll, I'll get to all that in a bit. But the price isn't terrible, but you're, you're paying for what you're getting, you know. The blade stock's a little thick. Um, I'll bring out the Spyderco Dragonfly here to show you what I mean. It's twice as thick as the Dragonfly. And it, don't get me wrong, it, it cuts pretty well, but the Dragonfly cuts a lot, lot better. <laughs> it has a higher flat grind. Um, I really I really kind of wish they'd done a hollow grind with this. I think that would have really, really upped the cutting potential of this. And I think it would have made it a better performing knife. Now, the full flat grind's fine. It, it cuts pretty well, does everything I need it to, but it could be better. The clip on this is pretty good, but it's kind of boring. Um, it, it has a decent amount of ramp, so it slides in and out of pockets pretty well. It I don't really care if it's deep carry or not. I just find the design to be really, really plain. Um, and this knife is so unbranded, apart from saying CRKT over here and saying CRKT right there, that it, I, I wish both of those would kind of go away. I don't mind the um, Pilar part right here, Voxnet's design, and as the, I guess, the model number 5311. That part doesn't bother me. That's fine, I guess. Um, the CRKT part is a little annoying to have it there and on the clip. Wish they would either pick one or get rid of both, preferably. And last on the neutral list is the action. So when it opens, it opens pretty well. You can open it a couple different ways. You can use it using the thumb hole. You can kind of slowly open it, which is how I figure you know a good chunk of people are. If you catch it right up here with your thumb, you can flick it open, and it opens you know pretty reliably. Um, how I generally prefer to flick it open though is uh, on the opposite side in that top little corner getting your middle finger and you can flick it. Now, that's the thing, it doesn't always work. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. Um, I've tried a couple different knife lubricants on here, uh, m namely Nano Oil and uh, KPL Knife Pivot Lube, but it just isn't getting the action that I want. And I think it's partially because of the plastic washers in there, uh, plastic Teflon, nylon, whatever in the hell. Um, you can see them there. They're certain. Well, you can see one of them. I don't know. Well, you can see the other one on the backside. Regardless, though, um, I really wish that they had gone with bronze. Or, in my opinion, most of the knives I prefer have um, bearings. But I can I can kind of understand why they would want this knife on washers. I just wish they had gone with bronze over plastic. I think it would have given it a better action, and it would have made it much more pleasing to open. All right, let's go ahead and get on to what I dislike. All right, onto the dislike list. Um, only a couple things here, actually, but they're both kind of big for me. Um, well, all three of them are kind of big for me. First up's the weight. This thing weighs a ton. Um, it, that's just because it's it's steel and steel. You know, it it weighs probably twice as much as this one does. Um, this one, obviously, it's milled out a little bit, but it, it's titanium, so it's gonna weigh less, but this is just super, super heavy, and when you bring it next to a knife that's the same size as it, it it's significantly heavier than the Dragonfly. The Dragonfly, you, you may not notice in your pocket. This one, you're gonna feel everywhere you go. Um, I've been carrying it for several weeks in a row now, and you, you know it's there. You're not gonna forget. It's a little annoying. I they're coming out with a larger version of this with um, a G10 show side. Probably going to pick that up just to compare them. I'm really hoping that's going to have a little bit more manageable weight. So we'll we'll see. Next thing up is the build. Um, I did a disassembly of this knife, I believe, during the unboxing. And if you look at this aluminum backspacer, the build quality of it is trash. Even right here, I literally just noticed this. You can see tooling marks right there kind of above my thumb and it's not great um this knife was just disgusting the first time i took it apart and I, i've you know i've beat up on it a fair bit um i i can see that and it, it's withstood that damage just fine but at this point i couldn't tell you what was from the factory and what was from me carrying it so that's that's a little annoying the build quality is pretty poor on this i'm gonna be honest the thing that gets me the most, though, is the lock bar. Um, the tension is terrible, and 
you can kind of see here, it's at least this part right here where my finger is, it's very abrupt. It's just a very sharp corner. It was like that on the lock bar as well. I took a Dremel and uh, rounded it off a bit. A lot more pleasant to close now, a lot more pleasant to use that, that lock bar. But the one thing that still gets me is the tension on that lock bar is ridiculous. And it, it goes over quite a bit, probably about 60% lock up on that. You can kind of see that there. And the, I just, I hate the tension on this thing. I hate it. I hate the lock bar on this knife. It's a, it's a pain to close. It's just, I hate it. It cuts in my thumb every freaking time I use it. And you can see there where I've been using it over the past couple of weeks. It's, it's really started to bite in. It's just, it's frustrating. Uh, the build quality, I don't like. The weight, I don't like. I hate that lock bar, though. All right. On to the conclusion. So all in all, what do I think of this knife? I think if you're looking for a small knife um, that that is not going to be your primary knife, yeah, pick this up. It's not bad. Um, I can see this being useful for occasional situations. If you're going to pick up a knife that you want to use every single day and you want it to be this size, get a CRKT. Or, oh my gosh. <laughs> get a Spyderco Dragonfly. Don't get a CRKT Dragonfly. I don't know what that would look like, but wouldn't look like this. Um, get a Spyderco Dragonfly. They're lighter, uh, better steel. You still got that finger troil. Great ergonomics. Better piercing point. Higher flat grind. It's just, it's better. Much, much better clip. Much better clip. Not that the clip on the pile on the piler is bad, but this is an amazing clip. It's just. If they had done it better, I, I would be I would be in love. If they had thinned out the blade stock a little bit, thinned out the handle thickness to go with that, done these scales in titanium, uh, maybe done a hollow grind instead of a flat grind, or if they just thinned it out, they could stick with a flat grind. That'd be fine with me. I I would I'd be much happier and put it on bearings or at least you know bronze washers instead of this garbage. Um. And, and they would need to upgrade the fit and finish quite a bit. If they could tune all that, tune the lock bar tension, the design itself is fantastic. The execution sucks. All right. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Don't forget to check out all my other videos. And if you're interested, I have a bunch of other knife reviews along with pen reviews and other stuff on my channel. So feel free to subscribe if you'd like to see more of that. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day. Bye.